Greetings everyone and uh, fellow pathological tires and fly designers if you're out there. Uh, my name is Dennis Potter and I'm glad that you could join me today for a pattern Zam techniques class. A few things I'd like to cover before we get started. Uh, first thing that I want you to uh, consider and keep in mind is be comfortable. It's uh, hard enough tying sometimes when you are comfortable so it is important that you are. Uh, a good chair is important, uh, something that is adjustable to a certain degree. It's worth spending a little extra money on. And your, the height of your vice, we see so very often vices very high and very low. There's been a few studies done uh, that really show the ergonomics of the whole thing, the ideal angle, if you will, of your forearms is about 20 or 25 degrees, which is what I have here. So be comfortable. Um, use the best materials and tools that you can. Good sharp scissors, very important. And particularly when it comes to feather products, the, the, the quality of the feather products that you use, you really want to spend as much money as you can there. And we'll cover that a little more here shortly. This is going to be a techniques and durability class, if you will. This is not about speed and numbers. Uh, one of the first things that goes out the window when we do tie too fast is durability and proportion. So we're going to we're not going to worry about rushing things. If you're closer to the beginning end of the, of the tying scale, don't worry when your fingers don't seem to work. Everybody goes through what I call 10 fat worms. It's, uh, it takes a while for your fingers to really get working the way that you, you want them to work. Uh, pattern is important. Yes, we are going to tie a specific pattern, but pattern means nothing without technique. Everything is technique oriented. Um, I'm also going to be somewhat of a name dropper. I won't necessarily tell you things that I don't like, but when I'm using specific materials, tools, that kind of thing, if I can give you a brand name, I certainly will. Um, so relax. Let's have a good time, and uh, we'll tie some great flies over the next hour or so, and I'm glad that you're with us. Uh, the first pattern that we're going to work on is what we call the Fathead Beetle. This is a redesigned fly from several years ago. Uh, this is one of my favorite little terrestrials. It's actually my go-to terrestrial and non-hopper water. Uh, we call it a beetle, but the important thing with this pattern is that it represents literally thousands of species of bugs. Uh, there's 3,500 species of beetles approximately in the United States. There are thousands of species of flies. And they all seem to have one thing in common, regardless of size, is shape. Somewhat round, oval, and what we're trying to do with this fly is really mimic that. We don't care what the fish is eating, whether it be a beetle or a horse fly or a deer fly. We just want them to eat the fly. So this is a fly that encompasses all these numerous um, different species. So we'll get started here. Um, the hook that I'm using is just your favorite dry fly hook of choice. This is a size 12. I tie these from size 10 through 18. If I had one size that I would stick with, it would be a 12 or a 14. This is a uh, 12 thread. We're just going to use a basic black 8 aught thread. And let's get it started here behind the eye and just put a basic coating of thread on the hook, but what we're going to do on this fly that most flies don't, particularly dry flies, is we're going to go beyond the shank, which this is right here. Shank length or body length in this kind of a fly is typically going to be from over the hook 